Jeff. Today's podcast is all about um, taking tools out of the van. Yeah, what's in the van, what you carry, uh, what we do to protect it, what can we advise people on maybe, and then what happened to you recently. Quick message from our latest sponsor, Life Audio. Now, they are looking for registered installers around the country. Head over uh, and send an email to lifeaudio at cwagencies.london. It's a great way of upselling your customer, adding value to your jobs, um, and you get a free t-shirt uh, once you become a registered installer, you get some stickers, and it's a great product to be associated with. Head over to cwagencies.london. All the techno babble and all the links will be in the show notes. Go and check it out. Yeah, so my van got um, got attempted this week. Yeah. So they, I don't know what they've done, but they've buggered up my handle. And it was, the handle was hanging out. Rear, passenger door, rear door. Side door. Side door, right. Side door. So the, it was hanging out and the, um, there's like a bit there and then the handle was hanging out and it's all there. And I was like, that's decent. Brilliant. Because mm. I needed to get in there because I had all the scrap in the back. open. No, what I did is I managed to sort of clonk it back in, and then if you pull it that way, it clicked all back in. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so that was fun. And But the thing is, here's, a, here's the rub. Here's the rub? Yeah, I never leave anything in there. Well, to be fair, like, yeah, you don't. I, I looked at your van earlier, it was just scrap cable, is it? Scrap cable and like maybe a, a vice and bender. What was the wooden shelf thing at the back? What was that? I never asked. Behind the bulkhead, Sam's got like a wooden, almost a table on an angle. Is that, is that yeah, no, no, so what is it is... a bed, is it? <laughs> it ain't fitting me on there. That's <laughs> not. <laughs> so, no, so what that is, um, I've got Stanley boxes. Well, DeWalt tea stack boxes uh, with drawers. And that that shelf fits perfectly six... Across, on top of it? On top. So oh, okay. three, two, two, and two. Yeah. And they fit perfectly there. And then, because sometimes I have to get like like proper stuff in there, like wood and all that sort of stuff. and Proper stuff, yeah. Well, you know, like not big cable, materials. Yeah, big yeah. materials. I still need a functioning van, so I built it up so I could still slide like sheets of wood in there yeah, yeah, yeah. and like lengths of trunking and stuff like that. Board, stuff like that. All kinds of things. Yeah. So you haven't got the issue at night time. If someone's breaking, there's nothing there. So when I'm at home, if I take my tools home with me, because I work away a lot. Yeah, all week, every week. Yeah. So if, and I work in a hospital, so the tools are safe in a hospital. Oh, you leave them there, do you? On yeah. Site? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'll leave them all weekend. It don't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I locked the door to a CT room. Yeah. And yeah. who's going to go in the hospital to steal tools? It's just not a thing. Yeah. It's yeah. just not a thing. So they're pretty safe there. So I, on a Monday, like I'll get I'll get to work and I'll unload in there. Yeah. But the other week, I got to I got to work and it was in a I don't know a skaggy part of Stockport. <laughs> and by the way, I had a guy today come up to me and went. I listened to your podcast the other day with him coating off Stockport. I was like, all right, Sam, where are you from? Stockport. I said, like, sweet. <laughs> I don't speak for Sam, so I'm out with him. No, what it is, um, this part of Stockport, listen, I've been all around Stockport at the moment. It's all right. It's not too bad. It's not Nuneaton. I don't see you say Nuneaton like everyone should know what Nuneaton's like. If you ever get the chance to go there, don't. All right, sweet. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so I was in this skaggy part of, like, it's like a, a Euro Park car park behind this really crap Airbnb they put me in. It was a, it was a dive, and I could see the van from my room, but it, yeah, it yeah. was in an open car park. In like, you know, all towns locate their job centre in a skaggy part, don't they? Yeah, it's the same. Here, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So the job centre is opposite, and I'm like, that, my van's definitely getting robbed tonight. <laughs> and I didn't take all the stuff out because I got there late and I couldn't be asked, and the labourer won't be. Because look, if it lets you in the ground floor or somewhere to take your tools out, which I used to do every night up the stairs, I'm like, it's a, so, I mean, it's an effort. And it I was is. just like, do you know what? I'm going to roll the dice tonight. Mm. And then that was the morning you woke up. Nah, me. the oh, next. Right, okay. So I was like, I, I, I had my tester in there. I had. I think one box in there, and I was like, oh, "Do you know what? I'm so this is how lazy I am." I was like, "If it gets robbed, it gets robbed. I'm not going down." Yeah. <laughs> so in the morning, I was felt for sure it was going to be robbed, and it wasn't. So I obviously got to work. Labor was there. I'm like, "Take that to the to the site. <laughs> Don't do anything. Like, Take that. Put that in there." And uh, anyway, come out the next morning, van had been tried. Oh Christ! Because it's like 
in the daytime it's a busy car park but yeah, at yeah. night it was just the poor solitary van yeah, in just the middle. Back. yeah it's a ta easy it's, target yeah easy target yeah we've had it i mean you've spoken before about <coughs> four break-ins the last one they didn't get anything because i caught them doing it everything got robbed well luckily the first time they didn't rob everything because my van was so upside down it was literally it looked like your van today but with just everything into yeah. mind. they got their hands on anything with a plug they took that's pretty much how it worked out i don't know and then uh but we figured out now, like, I've got the van vaults, which are good. People say they don't work. They do. The people were trying to crowbar my van vault the last time. Never got in. See, this is the thing. If it adds five minutes, it adds five minutes. Exactly. The harder you make it for them to get in, the better. We've got the deadlocks on the vans, which I didn't ah, have before. But this is the thing with them deadlocks. And they go the bend in the doors. If they yeah. can't get in, they'll cut a hole in your roof. You need to make their life as hard as it possible to physically get to your tools. See, this is a thing. So I lost the keys to the van, didn't I? Do you yes, remember? Did, yes. right. yeah, it was very funny. But it's not funny. Ooh, no, but no. my shed didn't find it funny when I headbutted the shed because I was so frustrated. No, you didn't. But it's not normal behaviour. No, it's not. That's just no. Sam behaviour. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't copy. Don't be like Sam. Leave the sheds alone. Yeah. Anyway, so. Well, now I forgot what I was going to say. You lost your keys. I lost my keys. And then. Um, and I lost the deadlock keys. Oh yeah, they were saying that. But one weren't locked, so that was sweet. So by the time I got new set of keys, whatever, um, the company wanted me to take the deadlocks off because last time they got that van got robbed. Right, it's because someone lost a key. It cost them four thousand oh, pounds. Right. Because they bent all the door and it busted yeah. up the bulkhead and all that sort of stuff. So they're like. Listen, we'd rather just buy you new tools. Yeah. Yeah, and we know someone, no, no mention names, would happily leave there, takes the tools out every night, leaves the van unlocked on the driveway, so if someone wants to break in, they just open the door, see there's nothing there. Worst case scenario, if they were to steal the van, insurance is invalid, because the van was left unlocked. Yeah. There's several ways, I would never recommend that to anyone, but that's what this guy does that we know. Um, I've said a, a few times to a few people on the phone today, Lewis, who watches the videos, you're going to fit van vaults like mine at the back, fit it low level and especially do it on the left hand side because if you ever get your doors bent open on the back, they can only get in through the top. Okay. Which means your van vault doors are so covered by your original lock, they can't bend the doors all the way out. Oh, okay. So they can't physically get in. And then I've built boxing all the way around it. Like you ain't going to get in it. If you really wanted to and they could physically open the back doors by getting through the, the main lock on the door and the deadlock, even if they cut a hole in the van to get in, you still can't get to the van vaults. No, this is it. Like you say, if you can reverse up to a wall as well, make life harder. Yeah, so we was always like we've been told that like if you like sometimes we have to stay in like a premier inn and stuff like so that. You park the vans next to each other. Either park them next to each other or park them really awkward in the corner of the car park. Yeah. So like right up to a bush. So yeah, yeah. But um, one of the things I thought was interesting is. Uh, your uh, mentor Jordan. Yeah. Um, God, I just said yes as well. <laughs> your mentor. Get the, get the picture. <laughs> this is a little trip recently to uh, this well, guy. He'll leave it in the middle now. Brilliant. This this, this guy um, <sighs> signed picture from Jordan um, in man. Nick's office. Yeah. Have a word. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, <clears throat> he done a video ages ago about installing a ring doorbell. Yes. To look after your van. Yeah. Now he got a lot of stick for that. Oh, people were like, yeah, because people were like, how is he trying to to sell ring doorbell installation as a van protecting van van protection system? But let's be honest, I put two... one on my on my drive. Yeah. It's a business. Yeah, we've got one as well. So I can understand if you don't have notification turned on. If you don't have notifications for motion, you would never know. Until well, yeah, for sure. But then the other thing, if you didn't and it's still recorded, brilliant, you then have footage of someone stealing your stuff. That does not help you protect your stuff. But if you've got notifications, you're like, boom. Yeah, that's what I mean. You go straight out there. You go straight out there, which, I mean, hand on heart, when I hit it with mine, when I confronted the people, police said it's the worst thing you could have done. I, I could have died, worst case scenario. They tried to hit me with a crowbar, could have had a knife. For all I know, it could have ended badly to save my tools. In hindsight, you would hope that I wouldn't do it again. I don't know I would. But did they stop and then just F off? No, they tried to fight me, two of them, with a crowbar until they got in the van and drove off. And then threatened, because I tried to take a picture of their number plate, that if I took a picture of their van, they would come back and pour petrol through my letterbox. They ain't going to do that. Though. They ain't going to do no. that, but they had balaclavas on 
uh, motorbike gloves. I couldn't tell you how old they were, where they were from. Like it was a point where even if I had CCTV of them, or the it wouldn't help. It wouldn't no. have helped. All I would have got is just watching guys take my stuff away. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is CCTV is great deterrent for people to see on an outside of a house. It's great for people to look up and go, I've got an LED floodlight with a camera, which you'll see on the way out. When you move, it follows the motion. So the literally light follows you around. That's really good. It's got the cameras outside. We've got deadlocks. We've got as much stuff to deter, deter people from going on it. But there's the next thing as well. Let's say your tools are stolen and it does happen to you. You need to make sure you brand in the, te the tools as best as possible, the See, testers. Yeah, this is the other thing. It's like, um, not with them silly stickers though. No, not with stickers. So what I've, I did a clip on Instagram, I don't know if you saw. My mate's got Definitely a... Not. No, Dan doesn't look anything online other than, I'm not going to say what he looks like. It's disgusting. TikTok. TikTok, yeah. <laughs> TikTok bitches. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Um, he's got a laser engraver. It's a laser cutter, a massive machine. We put one of my Bosch um, multi tools in the other day and he engraved very deep into it my massive logo. Oh, nice. So if you were to get it, you could do it in bits and bobs. You could do it on the batteries. You could get, someone could scratch it out, but this logo was this big on it. It was very Oh, big. okay. You could engrave them. I know you got George, uh, George Sparky on Instagram. He puts tape around it. Man, that's very easy to get off. But if you can identify them in a lineup, if someone does get busted and there's a van for tool, tools found, unless you're going around, which is a very smart thing to do, which I don't do, is take pictures of every serial number on the bottom of all your drills, your tools, your power tools, because they're all individual. Best intentions. You never do an eye. Never do it. But if you listen to this now, <coughs> and you've it. got half an hour, go and do it. Take pictures of all the serial numbers on all your power tools. If they ever get stolen, and if they're ever found back, you will get them back if they get reclaimed. You will. And yeah, that's insurance right. details for tool protection, it will be a lot easier claim-wise. Um, and also on top of this as well, because Troy is a friend of yours and mine for Rhinos Trade Insurance, because I do a lot. And Troy was on the podcast, not our one, uh, Trade Legends recently. Sam doesn't want to get into it. But he was saying as well, that for you guys out there that have tool insurance, it's a must. You know this, I know it's an absolute must to have tool, tool insurance, is take a picture of your uh, arsenal. Arsenary? Arsenal. Arsenal of everything you've got, your, your tools, your hand tools, In everything. Take inventory. Inventory. Take a picture of everything, and then if that day ever came, you can say, that's what I had, easy peasy. Because realistically, unless you do Instagram or YouTube or TikTok, how often does a normal man or woman take a picture of their power tools of how, what they've got and how many they've got? Yeah. Really? You, no, you just don't. Just, so you just it's don't. very difficult to show an insurance company or someone that you're trying to claim off what you own. But then this leads me onto the other fact. So if you can't identify them, well, you do, but it's easily removed. Have you ever heard of Apple AirTags? Yeah. The AirTags. Well, oh, no, I'm 10 years older than you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, more than that. Well, I'm not. How old are you? 39. I'm 29. It's 10 years. Yeah, 10. I'm not dead, though. So I'm not yeah, an yeah. Apple AirTag yeah. So an Apple AirTag, if anyone doesn't know, is, a, is an a Apple's product for GPS tracker, which the battery lasts a couple of years, correct? Oh, is it? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it a couple of years. I don't know what they are. You've got a, it's a literally a round disc that you can, it's like a 2P. Yeah, three yeah, three yeah. times as thick as a 2P. I've got loads, but my kids have got them on the keys. I've got them on the one in the van, there's one in the truck. They're all hidden in, in a discreet location where you physically wouldn't be able to find them if you didn't know it was there. Like I could say to you now, go and look in the van, you wouldn't find it. No, trust me, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. But it links because to your I, phone. I don't do looking. He doesn't do looking. We had this discussion with me at the half. But you get your phone out. So if you wanted to track your stuff, you go and find my iPhone and then you find it and you physically, and it will have an arrow and it will tell you exactly on Google Maps or Apple Maps, but if it's in location, I've got it on my keys, lost them in the house, it will take you to within two inches of your device. Oh wow. Up, down, left, right. It's, it's fantastic. I think the third, I'm gonna do a video on YouTube and show everyone properly with it, but like 29 pound each. One of them's hidden in every vehicle we own. One of them, some of them are hidden in tool bags in that I own. You could even fit them at some point in drills or have a fake battery, put it in that. So See, if anything ever gets stolen, what was it called? you could track it. Because it was that, remember that battery that someone sold ages ago, it had trackers in it. Yeah, we've done, a, a, uh, me and Rick, the original podcast, uh, Electrician's yeah. Guide to Everything podcast, we, which actually, just whilst I remember, I am re-releasing the first 20 episodes. Oh, I, yeah. I, like as a bit of nostalgia. Yeah. Like, because you can't, you can't find them anymore. No, no, because the only ones that are on there is when it was you, Rick Neal, and... Yeah, so um, the first 20 I'm going to re-release as a, a standalone podcast, so go and check them out when they come out. But we had a guy, um, he's an ex-policeman, ex um, and he used like next-generation technology to... and shrunk it into a battery, yeah. like tracking batteries. 
Um, they look like a normal Makita, weren't they? It's, it's it's basically, just buy a Makita battery, yeah. take the gubbins out, and put his gubbins in. Yeah. They wouldn't function as a battery. No, no, but it's a deterrent. <coughs> like, it's to sit there as a dummy version. For, yeah. yeah. So and he and he had like a track record of finding loads of yeah. loads of it. Um, he's um, I think only t on the tools. Mm. They bought the company. Oh, did they? Yeah. Hey, oh, fair enough. Well, it's the same principle, but you've got your own device, and I wouldn't ever say go and track down because of your safety reasons. You don't want to be following a group of guys around in a van. Don't be a bitch. Don't be a fool. That's what <laughs> Sam used to say. But realistically, you have the evidence. You know where your stuff is. You can easily get the police. You can go and get it, whatever. But you can track you, not in your vehicle, your tools, your tool bags, everything that you own. Yeah. For, for a hundred pound, I think you could buy a pack of, I think it's a pack of four. Oh, wow. That you can sell. I mean, you can go to the next level and put them in everything if you wanted to, like, depending on what you've got. But most of the time, if someone's going to be in your van and your tool bag's there and a few power tools, they're going to keep that all together in their van until they put it somewhere. See, I've been, I've been lucky, man, with tools. I've been yeah. lucky. I've only ever had one thing stolen, and that was a laser. Have I told this story before? This you did it on sight. Yeah, no, no, you left it on sight and you were gone within seconds when you blinked. Yeah, no, no, I was working. Yeah. And it, I was working, I was using it. <laughs> and I was turning around to my phone or something, and I was like, oh, maybe the batteries run out. Look back and it was gone. gone. Yeah. Yeah, we had it a few times, people nicking people's batteries on sight. That used to be a thing. All the that time. used to be. It's not so much now because they have them charging lockers. Oh, I say, this was but years ago. This is like 10 years ago for me. On <laughs> yeah, so you've got charging lockers on site now. So on, on the big sites, but um, so you, as a plug in the back, you put a pound in Bosch, and then oh you okay, put, right, put, yeah, yeah. So you don't really get that as much anymore, and that's why I bought Dewalt because back when I when I was first starting, it was all Makita. Everyone yeah, yeah, had no, Makita. Makita was massive back in the day, and I was like, well, I'll buy Dewalt because no one's got that, and no one's going to steal the to match their stuff. Yes, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> that's a good plan. But now I'm recommendations: get yourself a tool cover, run a train insurance, bundy ten for ten percent off. You're welcome. No, that's. It's a plug for my channel, sorry. <laughs> um, tool cover, mark your tools up so it's only recognisable to you. Take pictures of everything you physically own. Every power tool, every hand tool, every tool bag, your testers especially. The yeah. thing is, testing equipment, you'll have your own serial number anyway for your um, calibration certificates and whatnot. Yeah, uh, but it, uh, it's it's only only it's it, nothing. do you know what's the worst place for stolen tools? Car boots. No. Facebook Marketplace. Oh, yeah, well, that is. Honestly, yeah, well, it's yeah. like... I, because I, I was told something that years ago that stuck with me. Tradesmen don't sell their tools. No. Like you give them no, away okay. or you'll sell them to another electrician. Yeah. But you don't put them on Facebook Marketplace no, to no. sell. Most of the time, if I had got tools in the past before YouTube that I didn't use or want anymore, they would just sit here until one day I just threw them away. Jordan. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't. And then you've got people selling, oh, uh, we've got a Makita this, a DeWalt that, we've got a Tester this. They're not even called the right things. I've seen them all over. Yeah, and I'm like, that's clearly stolen. And do you know what else is a Liberty as well? They're not cheap either. No, I know. It's not like they're selling them like for like 30, 30 quid, quid or something. Yeah, no. It's like, they had like, they're selling they're it. Like, like, asking price. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. recommended Victor. Yeah, I might right. as a screw fix, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll get all that scratch on it. I know, but unfortunately, then it's the people that are actually buying it. It's just as so much as the problem. Do you know what? I don't think people do. I don't I think do. people do. They, they, they must do. I, don't, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're do, right. Well, I think it's just because I would never do it. I would never do it. Like, it's when you guys have been car boots around Stafford, this is years ago, where there would be a massive map pulled out, massive white transit. I know it's an old sprinter. It's normally a massive old white sprinter. Tall sprayed out. And I would walk around and go, oh, that's pretty cheap. Like, before I really figured out what it was, and you could, I could easily have picked someone up and gone, oh, that's 30 quid for a drill. Oh, it was a car boot once. Go on. It's the best thing I've was ever Was it a bought. sword? No, I've, oh. put, I've done that as well, but this is better than a sword. What's better than a sword? <laughs> Watch this. So I'm walking around, like, this wasn't too long ago, a couple of years ago, my mum my mom and dad live in Herm Bay, and there's like a massive car boot there that my wife and my mum love going to. I, I don't I like love it. Car I hate it. I'm it's so bikey. Yeah, yeah, it's wicked. It's so chavvy. I hate it. Anyway, so I'm walking around with a face on, just looking at stuff. I'm like, all of this is the people's old tat. Anyway, I look on this that one. That is literally what a car boot is, mate. Yeah, but it's stuff, it's stuff they can't... Like, you don't, it's it's just too, bad to, too bad to throw away. <laughs> it's, just a, it's like taking this to car boots out. Like, hey, mate, and asking 80p worth, for it. It's going to be worth a fortune in a few years. I'll punch someone if they're like, oh, this, how much is this, mate? 80p. Get out of my face. Yeah. But anyway, so I'm walking around 
and uh, yeah, why 80p? Yeah. And like people sell things for like 20 yeah. p Which when you go, don't worry about it. 80p and someone will go, I'll give you 50p for it. Oh, go on then. That's my mum. Why are you haggling? That's my mum. Oh, no. No. She's like, and you know what else she does? And I know she does this on purpose. She go, two pound? Two pound? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> I'm really like, pleasant. why are you doing, mum? Yeah. I'll walk away. And I'll, and I'll mum, come here. Why are you doing that? That's not okay, bruv. Right. <laughs> two pound. And anyway, can you just do it as a camera for everyone? Two pound. Brilliant. Um, so I'm walking around and I, and I saw something. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I had an idea what it was. So I was like, was it a flashlight? No. <laughs> I was like, can't mate, boot. what's that? And he went, oh, well, it's a personal protection device. I was like, yeah, I thought so. And it was a torch that was a taser. Oh yeah. I'm and he had two of them. Uh, how many? Two. 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 Brilliant. And so I was like, I was like, how much say? And he's like, oh, 15 pound each. And I was like, I'll give you 20. He's like, sweet. Got him home. I was like, uh, my dad come in and he's like, oh, I need one of them. <laughs> <laughs> we and bought I, me turkey. And, uh, and me and my dad are sort of looking at each other and I'm like, you got a heart condition. Did start playing this game, cool, not cool. <laughs> but um, I was like, we'll wait for Bianca to come back from Dubai. That's my sister. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, we'll wait for her to come back from Dubai. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you uh, No, no. Did you ever get tased with it? No. See, we bought some in Turkey. You know, you were, you were never allowed to bring them back. People tried, they got took off at the airport. But we there were torches, but they were powerful. And that, I've said before, I've had electric shocks. Hit me, no problem. Wow. Different. It hurt, and it did. I think I've told this before. Like we used to chase each other around when someone was sunbathing, or their eyes were shut, right around the bottom well, of their feet. I couldn't be friends with you. Yeah, well, it was great fun. We all do it to each other. No, it would not. The I worst, would not find that fun. The worst time uh, was in Australia, and my mate lived out there for a bit. It was three of us that went. We went to a cattle ranch. We were all absolutely pissed on goon, which is their like port wine thing, and they had a bull prod. Oh my god. I got hit with that. I must have flown for foot absolutely on the floor like that is the worst thing that I've ever, ever done. I willingly stood there and went, Yeah, sure. <laughs> Old lady did it to me. No. Oh mate, it was just it's it was like being hit by a car in in that space. Yeah. The, sh the sheer power of it. Wow. I wouldn't recommend anyone. See, I've done something similar. I was um when I was a scout. A scout. Yeah, I was a scout. It was really good fun because basically, I, all, be, I was a scout. Yeah, all, all, all a you done was a beaver. Yeah, all you done was make bonfires yeah. and throw the old cans and run off. We used to have jacket potatoes and foil and just put them on the edge of the oh, fire. We didn't do shit like that. It's not. No, we was. No, well, we, we made just, the fire and then we cooked the food. We didn't do anything like that. No, no, we just oh. threw the old cans and everyone would have to run off because it was going to blow. <laughs> this is not surprising. <laughs> we were so excited. We used to pack our bags full of deodorant cans. <sighs> But anyway, we're getting off the subject. Should we do um, that? Do you want to do that with the unit? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what we we should have to do that, bring an air rifle and we'll hide back. Oh listen, I've got a story. I've got, I've got oh, to tell sorry, this story. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So in the old house, we was up on on the hill like this. So like the house is there and then you had a step garden, but you had steps up to the house. Yeah. And then you could over the field where my dad used to walk his dog would go up so you could see the house from the from the field yeah you could see the field from the house anyway me and my brother was in the back garden and we'd lit a bonfire and we'd put the own cans in front of it and we'd get the air rifle and yeah. shoot it and then blow up yeah no but blow up so i thought it'd be a good idea you know camping gas the big balls not the big like the little like ones. that one no they're like little little ones the like squat that. ones yeah 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 Put one of them in front. On, yeah. yeah, exactly that. Put that in front. Anyway, oh. shot through it, and it went up like a, it went up like a mushroom cloud. Oh and all I got was a phone call from my dad. What's going on in the garden? I'm surprised. <laughs> all the windows were rattling and everything. Oh. I thought we'd, the police were definitely coming oh, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But forget that for a minute. I touched a electric fence. When? When I was a scout. Oh, I think it was recently. No, right, I touched okay. an electric fence. Yeah, Listen, yeah, I learned my lesson. Yeah. So we went to a sheep field and I touched the electric fence and it was like, all right, yeah, like yeah, I could, yeah. you could hold on to yeah. it, <laughs> like that. And I was like, and then there was one, with, it's a cattle field and they were, like, we was hiking through some bullshit place and there's a cattle field and they had a fence in front of the fence. I was like, well, mm. come on. And I leant over, bam, pop a bolt. That is worse. I think that's worse than way a worse. 240 electric shell. Way worse. Yeah. Way worse. Sit you on your ass. We did. We used to mess around being the grown around loads of fields. I got shot the other day. 
I got shocked the other day. After your safe isolation? Yeah. Procedure, after that? Yeah. <gasps> How? So when you work in a hospital, you have to um, isolate everything. You can't work like, like I know, we said this last episode. Yeah, it loads, just, of, loads of good comments, by the way. Did you read them? That people put about how you, it's literally impossible to work. You have to set all these procedures which take weeks to plan. Like the safe isolation that's thrown around on um, social media is not a real world. I can't see how that would even work in a hospital. It just wouldn't. It's, it's yeah, impossible. So. It's dumb. So this one, so I'd isolated the circuit um, and it's in trunking now. So there's a number of different circuits running through this trunking. Right. So I'd isolated our room. Yeah. But for some reason... So want to pass another circuit. Of course. Yeah, it's yeah. hospitals. It's wiring over wiring over wiring. It's chaos. But I reached into the into the trunking to pull out because I'm stripping it out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm pulling it out. I've, I've already got my leg over here and I'm pulling it out like this. And I reached up into the trunking to get it. And I was like, oh, what is that? Yeah. And it, what had happened was where they pulled it in... Oh, it stripped the... It stripped a little bit of... Oh, I was like, that's brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. That's not kind. No, no. no. And, and what is the solution to that? I'll tell you what it is. You, you, should, you have to, you have to pen test everything before you yeah. stop it. But that's not realistic. You, you can't. No, no. I mean, you are meant to use a pen. I think you say, what would you do to cover it up? I'd say most people just wrap tape around. Oh well, no, I had to find that circuit. Isolate it. Isolate it. Strip it. Redo no, a connection. No, no, no. That's gone. Oh, that's gone. I don't know where it goes. Oh, I found it. I turned it off. Doesn't <laughs> done. done. Let's go back to the electric fence thing. Yeah. I, we we've been electrocuted loads of times, and my mate thought it wasn't too bad, and it hurt when you grabbed it. Yeah, and we all went, "Oh, take your shoe off." He had no idea what he was doing. Like, took his shoe off and then touched the electric fence. He turned into the same size of a five p coin. Like his body just went. Mm. Like no. hit him that because he obviously had rubber shoes on before, which still protected him a bit. See, I'm so done with this stuff. I did not realise that would shoes make it worse. you earth yourself. Oh my Is god! It? He, it was like he'd been shot in the chest by a shotgun. It was that bad, and we watched it. He and he. This we were probably about 12, 13 at the time. He cried for about twenty minutes. <laughs> it was that bad. I bet, um, I bet he thought he's. Good, I bet he thought he's going to die. Oh, uh, but we did it. We would make a line of people, and we'd all touch it. You know when you're at college and they get the tester out and you hold hand. You no, do, you never did that. No, listen. Uh, I know it's not health and safety <laughs> nowadays. Throw my college under the bus. But yeah, the lecturer was like, you know, everyone hold hands or hold whatever. The lecturer. Yeah, yeah. but no. he was sound. Like it was a thing of <laughs> at some point electric, you're yes. going to get electric shock. He says, but this is what this is a battery operated tester. Like, I don't know how I many happened. How many lads have had it at college? But it was a dumb thing all the time. Some of the lads were putting them on in their nipples on the under their fingernails. And we were with the college with some weird guy. These isn't the lecturers. This is pupils. But then with electric shocks, my so mate. It's not like a sex college. <laughs> <laughs> Adam's there now. <laughs> right, sorry for the interruption. My SD card was full because we're not used to doing this on a camera. It's meant to be on a computer. So, yeah, this is better though. Yeah, I'm enjoying this. Anyway, so my other story, which was the. Uh, the next door, <laughs> which is the electric fences. My mate uh, went to. We were climbing over, walking over a field once, took an touch electric gate. <laughs> And for no reason, he jumped off and he punched one of my mates in the face. And we were like, at that time, to punch your mate in the face for no reason was like, what just happened? And he just turned around and went, you just kicked me in the balls. Like, out of nowhere. And we were like, well, I, I didn't get punched. I was all right. I was just yeah. like, he didn't. To break the hand if they punch your giant head. <laughs> but he, yeah, he turned around. And obviously, the, the when it got shocked, it hurt him in his balls. And he just went and punched someone. <laughs> There was no quarrel about it. It's like, oh, he's keeping the balls, I'm going to punch him. Um, but yeah, we touched, we realised afterwards, once we touched the gate, he got us as well. But yeah, don't touch electric fences unless you're going to film it. <laughs> then it's funny. But, listen, I haven't got the, I haven't got, I'm not brave enough to touch another electric fence. I think my heart would go, to be honest. It's <laughs> the anticipation of it. <sighs> yeah, because we know, like, I'm it not we, trying oh, to get a shock. God, I don't right. like them. Like, but back in the day, I said, well, I don't care get a shock. I don't work live. Like, I wouldn't do it now. No, I just don't do it. It's not fun. I just don't do it. I like, and then when I got shocked the other day, I was so fuming about it. Mm. I was like, I'm not going to let it ruin my day. <laughs> you know I'm still mean? alive. And I'm still alive. Yeah. I was up a ladder in between, in a ceiling grid, reaching into it. That's pretty bad. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Like, you can't mitigate every circumstance that you might get shot. Like that, no. I mean, you, the fact that he was pulling cables, we've had it before, where we've done a rewire and we've pulled a cable through and we've had to replace the cable we've just put in. 
because it ended up pulling through the insulation. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, sometimes if you're not paying 100% attention to it, that's a f something that we put in. Imagine yeah. something with you, like it's so difficult. And, and like I, I was by myself that day doing it, and I just and I got this bolt and I was like, Jesus, like it's meant to be isolated. Mm. Everything in there is isolated. And there's nothing worse than electric shock when you least expect it. Genuinely, that yeah. is because I know. We yes, did, when you cut through a cable, you you know you think everything's dead. But you think, oh, it's a few circuits that are live here. We need to be careful of that. And you accidentally get the wrong one. They're the worst ones. Oh, do you know what the worst one is? Is if you. No, not the worst ones. Just, no, the worst ones where you think everything's dead and you're not going to get a shell. This is it. Yeah. I was making off some on like a in like a commercial job, and they should have all been dead. Mm -hmm. And I was making off a board, and somehow it was. Was I making off a board? No, I was. I can't remember what I was doing, but I was up a ch chimney. We can say a chimney then. No. <laughs> anyway, I was fanning about with these cables, like just stripping the ends. And you know when you put your thumb on the on, on the, the cables, yeah, as you strip it, like and that was live. And I, I was, oh, <gasps> mate, because and it does happen. It, yeah. do, it just does happen. Do you know what? Years ago, when I was when I was a kid, the woman across the road. Her husband was an electrician, mm. and he had one of them wind-up things. And I was about seven. Wind wind-up testers. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the old the school, old mega mega ones, yeah. yeah. And I was about seven, and he was like, "Hold that!" And he wound it up quick. Yeah. I got a shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but is that bad? Is that naughty? Like, can you die from it? Probably not. No, it's batteries. If you think it's just triple A batteries or double A batteries in a tester, it's not the voltage that kills you; it's the ampage. Like I've always said this. Yeah, but you never get enough amps off a couple of batteries to kill you. Never. It will hurt. It will be... There's Dave Savies a person to ask this, or Mark, but you can't die off six AA batteries. There's not enough ampage Should in Should we that. try? What? To kill myself off the batteries? Yeah. No. Why? I'll, I'll, I would happily shot myself with a mega on camera to show that, yes, it hurts, but it ain't going to kill you. But then again, I could do that, and someone has a weak heart, and it kills them, so do not copy <laughs> don't, that. Don't, do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know Everyone's what? different. Next week, we're going to take a, a sensible stance and do diverted neutral current. No, we're not, because no one cares. What's that? Exactly. It's a big word for you. Well, diverted neutral currents. Yeah, something that I didn't think you would know about. <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> it's, who cares? No. <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> who cares? I I is this like... a dig at someone? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, right. anyway, moving on. <laughs> but um, what was I going to say? Guess what happened to me this week? Um, you ate a pie on the way oh, through to Stafford. Bad boy pie today. Pie. So I'm working at Top North. Stockport. Stockport. So I was like, in a petrol garage. Oh, was it? Walked yeah. in a petrol garage and they got these. A pet pet why is it a petrol garage? Do you mean a petrol station? We call it, uh, listen, it's you a garage, call it a petrol yeah. garage? Yeah, man. Or a garage? Garage. Do you ever call it a diesel garage? Don't know. When you need diesel. I, I, never, I never say diesel. But you go to get diesel, but you call it petrol yeah. in your diesel van? Like, yeah, I even say to a man, so I'm like, I've got to go and get petrol, babe. So if you ever had an electric van, would you still go, oh, I need to plug the, the car in tonight for some petrol? Probably. Yeah. Okay. No, I say juice. Ju yeah, yeah, yeah. I say juice yeah. a lot. But... I was walked into the, into the petrol garage. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and there were some pies there, and like there were some decent pies as well. A butter potato and butter pie. Yeah, I ain't I ain't interested in that. Steak and kidney pie, chicken and gravy. Oh, delicious! Smash that down yeah. on the way here. But what do you know about carbon monoxide alarms? I know a bit. I knew nothing. Oh, okay. So I we used to rent at our house. We used to rent our house before we bought it. Yeah, by law you meant to have one. Yeah, so they had, they had one in there. So the other night, Sunday night, about seven o'clock, I'm sitting there, you know, just dreading work the next day, whatever, and Harper's running around and I'm trying to watch Sank on TV, and all I hear is a smoke alarm go off. Bloop. I'm like, but that don't sound like a smoke no. alarm. And it's like, what's that? It's a higher pitch sound. Yeah, it? and it's like, beep, 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 beep. And I'm like, oh, what is this now? Anyway, go out there. And it's, I see it's carbon oxide, and I'm like, well, that's serious. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not a joke. That's not like a smoke alarm going no. off where the toaster's burnt. So I was like, oh, wow, that's not good. So I opened a window, and it stopped. I was like, that's really not good. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's really not good. So I didn't know what to do. And I didn't... Did you not smell gas? 
the whole point of carbon monoxide thing, you can't smell it, bruv. I know, I know, but a lot of the time, a gas boiler would also set it off. It doesn't have to be carbon monoxide. Oh, okay. To my knowledge, I could be wrong there. Anyway. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. I didn't know, I started panicking because we've got a lot of stress at the moment, yeah. all kinds of stuff going on. And I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I phoned the National Gas Emergency Helpline. Right. I was like, my carbon monoxide alarm's going off. And they was like, we're sending, we're sending someone around. Did they? Yeah. 20 minutes later, someone knocks really? at the door. Really? Yeah, so really someone knocks at the door. I'm like, well, this is all right. Yeah. Comes in and goes, I was like, my alarm's going off. He goes, yeah, I can hear that. And uh, he's like, right, uh, all I can do is make safe. So we're going to cap off your gas. Wow, yeah, cool. I was like, wait. How do you know it's even like yeah, yeah, a thing? Yeah. They're like, well, all we can do is make safe. I was like, don't worry about it. It's like, well, if you don't let me cap it off here, I'm going to cap it off in the road. It's going to cost you £2,000 to put it back on. So it's like, it's half past seven on a Sunday night. I've got to go to Stockport tomorrow. How am I going to get this sorted out? Yeah, fact. And no it, hot water, no central heating, no cooking. You're going to like this next part. No, uh, no central washing, not bothered about that. Um, no washing? Yeah. It's half oh, seven mean, on a Sunday. Right. I, we call washing as in the dishes or the, the clothes. You mean washing your body? Cleaning. A shower or a bath? Whatever. Bath. 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 There's no F. It's a bath. But at Yeah, but you say bath. 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 I say free as well. I keep getting told off by But anyway, let me finish the story, bro. <sighs> anyway, right? So, so he caps off the gas and I'm like, brilliant. Inside. From the, the, the head outside. So I'm like, brilliant. We're already skint. Yeah. This is a stupid job. We're already skint. I'm like, how much is that going to cost to get back on? He goes, oh, not much. About 80 quid. I'm like, might as well be 20 grand. Um, anyway, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, brilliant. Nice one. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Come again. Do you know what I mean? He goes, oh, well, uh, I don't... I was like, what is wrong with my... What? Where's the carbon monoxide coming mm. from? Because now, he's about to walk out and it goes off again. I'm like, bro, it's going off again. He goes, oh, it might be a faulty alarm. Ah, oh, brilliant. I was you like, want to check that to start with? Yeah. Then. He goes, oh, well, I've got no way of testing it. Was, and he goes, but this ain't going off. So your thousand pound one ain't going off, but, but the, mine is. But your 20 quid one that you can buy at B&Q. Yeah, yeah. Like, brilliant. And I was like, but you capped it off. He goes, yeah, but I've got no way of making sure. And you got a little one. I was like... Because it falls on his head then. That's that's the problem. Everything is who's the blame, the blame game. Yeah, but it's not a thing. If that's going, so if my alarm's going off and his and isn't, his isn't, it's going to be your alarm. It's my alarm. Yeah. So I wrapped up in the towel. So he's gone now. I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell? So I wrapped up in the towel and it's going off. It's it's not stopping going off now. Mm. I put it out in the garden. I can still hear it. Uh, now it's winding me up. So I put it in a bowl of water. That doesn't was- kill it. Is it not? No. Oh. I can hear it through the water now. And I, I went outside and I threw it at the ground as hard as I possibly could. Then Actually should. strained my arm. Well, I just threw it with such anger. And it smashed into a thousand pieces. That problem solved. But yeah, got my gas capped off. I, I, is it back on now? Yeah, what it was, the, and you'll like this part of the story. The gas engineer was, um, who installed the boiler was the father of the lady who owned it. Right. Um, and he is your number one fan. Oh, she's just too cool about this. Yeah. yeah. And he, and like, Go on, so, tell the listeners. Come on. Oh, yeah. So he he was telling me about his favourite YouTubers because I was like, oh, I've got podcasts and that. And he's like, oh, do you know Nick Bundy? And I was like, yeah, I know Nick Bundy. He's He got famous off the back of me, you know? Yeah, you can put that above my head if you want. Yeah, yeah. 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 But no, um, so yeah, he come round and he sorted out the next day. So, well, that's good ending though. We had the same thing, so I was sat here when we did a podcast a couple of weeks ago and I could hear this alarm going off, but it wasn't, it was a full-blown smoke alarm. And I've got an elderly lady next to me. I was like, you know when you can hear it from every direction, it sounds like someone from somewhere else. Anyway, ended up going to the garden, I was like, I can hear it. Maybe it's just she had an alarm or something next door. So I ran around to see if she was okay. Didn't know if someone had broken into the house. It was a house alarm or a smoke alarm. It was a fire and she was on the floor or what. Opened the, knocked on the, she was like, hey, you're right. I said, is your alarm going off? She goes, it is, it wouldn't shut up. So I put it in the shed. Great. Brilliant. So we can all hear it then and she couldn't. So I went to it and it was one of the B&Q ones that you can't replace the batteries. And I was like, uh, yeah, you just have to get a new one. Like ring the fire 
department in the morning. Department, right? Stanley York. Yeah, sorry. Fire brigade in the morning, and uh, or I can get you on for being queued up to you. I said tonight, just don't use anything if you've not got a smoke alarm. Just be insensible because she's an old lady. And she says, "Okay, oh, you shut it up for me." I said, "Yeah, I can." Just took it back out, just like you did. Oh, oh, billion pieces yeah. and uh, silly thing to do at night because it went everywhere. Yeah, it yeah, might did. Yeah, absolutely everywhere. But yeah, absolute pain in the ass. We've got the um, the Nest ones, the Google Smart ones. Oh, okay. I fitted them when we first moved in, way before YouTube started to buy everything. Oh, and ninety five pound each they are. <laughs> I know, but they all link up your phone, and it's a good thing if we're out during the day if they go off, it notifies your phone. There's a let's say this it does test, but there's smoke alarm on the kids landing or whatever. And they're very cool. Like I know you can do with it. Is it Aco? Yeah, apparently they've got new, new, new flash ones out, and you can yeah. do all that stuff. But the good thing with the, the Nest stuff, it linked in with my heating, it linked in with the cameras, it linked in with uh, the smoke arms, and it used to link it with the uh, is it Philips Hue bulbs. Oh, nice. So when they link in, if there's something going off, the light bulbs will flash red to say there's a Listen, warning or something. That just pisses me off. I'll be like, why? No, no, no. So, but it was that. one of the cool things no. that I thought. At some point, I'll buy them, but then I realised how much Philips Hue were outside. They're too I'll hear them if it goes yeah. off, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll be alright. Yeah. yeah, I don't need a um, don't need a red alert. No, but no, I, it's a cool bit. In we've got in the house, and every now and then they self test, and it will notify your phone. Alarm's going to go off in five seconds. It's just a little, it's just because it has it cleans out the speakers or whatever it does to itself to make sure it can continue working. I'm bored. All right, let's go then. All right, sweet. Listen. Show notes, um, not show notes, comments. Let us know if you prefer this setting because we'll do it again next week. Are you local again? I'm local for the next three weeks. So okay. let us know if you like this setting or you prefer it on a computer. And also uh, on top, give us some subjects because we want subjects that you lot are going to be interested in. Yes. You want to talk about bullet points below. Give us a couple of things each, whether or not it's personal questions we don't mind about work this sort of stuff anything that help you guys out or you just find completely random subjects for us to chat about even if it's not about electrics if it's something that we're interested in if you want to talk about aliens we'll talk about aliens we did that no, we've we did done that, that. We'll and talk about, about three we'll people, talk about zombies instead that was terrible as well was it yeah it didn't do well yeah but you me loved it i know maybe we do uh when we would do some unfiltered we can always like do unfiltered but yeah let us know if you like this format and we will try to recreate it. And next time, we'll change the lights as well, so I don't have a black face like this. I don't know why you're wearing a hat indoors. It's well, so dumb. Time. All right, mate. I'll take it off. Child. Take care now. Bye bye then. Monday Club, we're out. <laughs>